Welcome back to Spiritual Formation by Grace City Church of the Northeast. We're continuing our walk through the New City Catechism and continuing thinking together about the sacraments, baptism and the Lord's Supper. We turn to the Lord's Supper for today and tomorrow. Today is question 46. What is the Lord's Supper? Christ commanded all Christians to eat bread and to drink from the cup in thankful remembrance of him and his death. The Lord's Supper is a celebration of the presence of God in our midst, bringing us into communion with God and with one another, feeding and nourishing our souls. It also anticipates the day when we will eat and drink with Christ in his Father's kingdom. The scripture passage that goes along with the question and answer for today is 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So what is the Lord's Supper? It's something first that Christ commanded. Christ commanded all Christians to eat bread and to drink from the cup in thankful remembrance of him and his death. So at the Lord's table, we obey Christ. And this is again where the word ordinance is a fine one for what we're doing. Jesus said, this is what you're supposed to do. Do this in remembrance of of me. And Baptists have tended to emphasize the do this part of it, and that is not wrong. It's something that we are to do. It's a command of our Savior. But his commands have good reasons, and they are for us, and they're for our good. And that is abundantly clear in this command to participate in the Lord's table, to eat the bread, and to drink the cup in remembrance of him. Because it's not just that we obey Christ at the table. We also share in Christ. That second sentence said, The Lord's Supper is a celebration of the presence of God in our midst, bringing us into communion with God and with one another, feeding and nourishing our souls. So we don't only obey Christ, we share in Christ. Now we don't know how, It's something spiritual, and that's where the word sacrament is another good word for what we're doing when we come together to celebrate the Lord's Supper, because there is more than meets the eye. We're not just taking bread and eating it, and we're not just drinking and enjoying that and saying, okay, there it is. We did the thing we were supposed to do. Christ is present with us. A key text for that is 1 Corinthians 10, 16, and 17. In the argument that Paul's making over those three chapters, 1 Corinthians 8 through 10, about food and drink offered to idols, he says, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in Christ? Or the the bread that we bless, is it not a participation in Christ? And his point is that it is. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we share in Christ. It's not that the bread turns into the body and the and the wine turns into the blood. That's not what happens. It's not something that literally happens, but there is a spiritual, real presence of Christ with us as we celebrate the Lord's Supper in obedience to him. So we share, we participate in, in Christ. And we don't do that alone. So yes, each of us has share in Christ. We are in Christ individually, but we are in Christ together. And we do this as the church when we gather. For us at our church, it's every week as we gather together on Sundays, as we close our gathering, we are reminded We remember together what Christ has done for us, and we share in Christ. We feed on Christ together, and we are nourished, not just individually, but together. It's a sign of our communion with God and with one another. It should bring unity to the church. It's a reminder that we only get in, and we're only kept because of the body and the blood of Christ, that his work is applied to us by 
the Spirit. So it's not because I'm better than someone else or someone else is better than me. We are one in Christ. We all got in the same way. We have God as our Father, Jesus Christ as our brother, because he gave his life for us. It also anticipates the day, that last sentence, when we will eat and drink with Christ in his Father's kingdom. And that's what Paul says at the end of that key verse for today. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So we remember his death. But it's in anticipation of his glorious return when there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, when he comes to make all things new. So our participation in the Lord's Supper is a participation in Christ, but it's also a proclamation of Christ. We remember what he has done, but we also say we believe that what he has done in the past means that he will keep all his promises for the future and we will share in that great meal with him and drink wine with him new in the kingdom of God. And we anticipate that day with longing and with joy and we feed on Christ to strengthen us to do what he's given us to do while we wait for him. Let's pray. Bread of life. We take the Lord's Supper in reverent obedience. We do not want to receive it unworthily, so we come in repentance and faith. Help us to forgive the sins of those who have sinned against us, especially the believers with whom we share the bread and the cup. May our partaking of this meal proclaim your saving death and our desperate need of it. Amen.